Hi guys, today I want to make a branding iron of my initials. Um, these are some that I made years ago when I used to make wooden horse name signs. Um, they're just bits of quarter round, just cut and welded up and put on handles. Nothing special, um, but they're a bit thick. They just see they're just tacked on the back there, so a Y. Um, anyway, I so say yeah, they're a bit thick because they're quarter, and when you burn them in, it comes up much more than quarter. So I'm going to try and make a smaller one today, um, and so have my initials. And this is the sort of thing I'm going to try and do. Nothing fancy. Uh, I wanted to try and keep it simple. So we're going to break it down into a C, a hockey stick type affair, and then a T. It's a very simple. What I'm going to use is a bit of this stuff. It's half inch thick, or half inch wide, but it's only eighth of an inch thick. I'm hoping that will make the difference really. Um, it might even be better to go thinner, but we'll give it a try and see what happens. You get the strength from the thickness, or the width. So we're going to start off with the C bit. So what I'm going to use is this little old jig. I don't know what it was for, it was two bits of pipe, one inside the other, and I just welded around the top for a bit of strength. It was obviously for something reasonably hard or thick, and there's a bit here was a used as a stop for something or other. I have no idea what it was. Anyway, I'm going to use it, I'm just going to get it hot, hold it there with my scrolling tongs, and bend it round. So let's get it warm, give it a go. Short heat, otherwise it'll go all over the place. Hold it on. And this stuff you could almost bend it cold but it's much neater if you do it hot. I'm going to slightly over bend it. There you go. So that you can cut it on the bend so you don't get a flat. That's the idea anyway. Alright so that's the first bit which will, obviously it's not going to be perfect for the to match the uh, printout, but it's near enough, it's the right size, and we'll be able to jiggle it around and get it to fit there. So next we want to do the hockey stick, I'm going to do that on the other end. I want a sharp bit of the anvil here, my anvil hasn't really got many sharp edges, so I'm going to use the cutting table. So that's about the sharpest bit we've got. Just going to bend over about three eighths of an inch, I suppose. Pull it back, bend it over, but don't hit the corner because you want to keep that. Try and keep that some meat in it. You see that's bent and it's got quite a radius, so I'm going to try and heat it up and bash it back into itself so that we don't get rid of the radius completely, but we fill it up a little bit so it's a little bit squarer. I've heated it and I'm just cooling out the very tip so that I can hit it without distorting it too much. Bash it back into itself. I'm trying to... It doesn't have to be perfect, you know, it's only a brand for God's sake. But I want to try and get it somewhere near. And so you don't want to thin it out too much by hitting it too much or hit the corner. I think that'll probably do. It's near enough. Get it upright. Or oh, 90 degrees. Yeah, that'll do. That's a lot squarer than it was. It's still got a radius obviously but it's better. So let's cool it out. I don't burn my paper. So that's going to go on that bit. And it's just a simple bit of making the other two, which are just 
cut off straight bits. So we've got this, I'm going to mark it roughly where I want it. Get my pencil. Roughly about there. Should do the job. Somewhere there. That's not far out. And then the other one. We can mark that off from the, the drawing. Although it doesn't have to be exact to the drawing. Just eye it up really. See what looks right. So I'm just going to cut them off. Whip this one off here. That's that one. Turn it over because I've got it on the other end. Whip the other end off. And I'm going to try and cut this at a bit of an angle so it goes a bit squarer to the, the upright. So it's not 45, but it's at an angle anyway. So when it joins the that bit, I've just measured the other two bits. I'm just going to clean up the end of it where the burr was. I think the first bit, the cross piece of the H, is about 15mm. I'll add that off about there. That's that bit. That's hot. And then the second bit, I think was about 35mm, 36 that off at there. They're great these uh, cutting discs. Right, so that's those. I'm just going to tidy the ends up, take the burrs off. This actually is a bit hot. Not that easy to hang on to. That one's a little bit on the warm side as well, but that's okay. Right, let's go and play about with it. Alright, so it's a bit of a jigsaw puzzle. And I'm doing this upside down so that the camera's got it the right way up, so it's a bit hit and miss. You can see now why I cut that circular bit with a slight angle on it because it now fits up against the hockey stick bit quite square. Now that middle bit, mm, I think it's too short. It looks like it could have been a bit longer. I don't quite know how to show it. No. Anyway, you can see it's, it looks a bit narrow. So I'm going to cut another piece of that because I want the letters to be about the same width. So as if by magic, there's another bit, slightly longer, and that that's going to be much better. That will make the the both the letters about the same width, which is what I want. So I might have to do this upside down, tack it. Uh, thinking about it, although maybe not. Uh, when I Put it the right way up for me, but it's the wrong way up for you because, as I say, the cameras are on the bench the other way up. And what I'm going to do, it's easier to see on this bit of paper, I'm going to try and tack them together like that, but I want to mark where I want them to join so I've got an idea when I turn it up the other way. And that's about where I want it to join up to. So I'm going to 
mark that on the other side. Transfer the mark across, which of course you can't see. Actually, I'm completely ballsing this up because I don't need to do it the other way up. But what I do need to do is just take the corners off just a fraction so that when I do put a weld on the bottom, the bit that's going to be burning in, when I grind it off flat, I'm not just completely grinding the weld off and it's going to fall apart. So I'm just going to quickly whiz the grinder across those. Right, again as if by magic, I've quickly whizzed the grinder across those edges. As I say, I don't need to do it upside down, I can do it the right way up because I'm going to tack it both sides so it doesn't really matter. The bottom side is going to be ground off but the top side I can do it however I like. Let's put it back on this bit of paper, it shows much better on here. Alright, so that's roughly how I want it, where the mark is. Oh, silly arse. Can't do it on the paper because I won't get an earth. So, sorry, you're going to have to look at it on the bench. You'll have to excuse me, actually. I'm feeling as rough as a badger's arse today. I've got a cold, I've got a cough, I feel rough. And it's uh, making me harder thinking today. And let's go attack that. Simple there. Just a little quick tack. Doesn't need to be much because I'm going to tack it underneath as well. So that's got that. I see there's a little bit of weld, spot of weld in there. I'll get that out afterwards. Alright, now I'm going to mark halfway along where I want the cross piece of the H. Where long is that? There. You know what I should have done because this is bloody fiddly. I should have actually left the bar in a full length, then I could hold it at a distance, tack it on, and then cut it to the length I want instead of fiddle arsing about like this, trying to hold it as I go. So that's that bit there, just tacked on there. There's the other bit, oh I'm taking the burr off of that. So I'm just going to quickly whiz the grinder across that because that's sharp where that was cut. Right, that's better. Now, I'm just going to line that up there. Fiddle. Now that's going to be wrong. I made a, another balls. <laughs> what I should have done, I've put it halfway between there and there. What I should have done was put it halfway between there and there. Because as you can probably see, the bottom legs are longer than the top. Because it's not halfway between that one. So, start again. Break the tack. Now I'm going to measure this one. Told you I was harder thinking today. Never mind. That's the beauty of metal. You can break it, re-weld it, grind it. Can't do that with wood. I'm not so easy. Right. Where's the middle? About there. At 19 mil. Something like that. Okay. So let's see if I can fiddle arse about and hold this together. I really should have left that in one length. I never thought of that. I could have tacked it on the middle bit, then left the other bit on. Yeah, just cut it all. Instead of trying to fiddle and faff about like this. Or I could just go and get the magnet out and hold it on the magnet, but trying to weld anywhere near a magnet is a pain. It, it really disrupts the world. Anyway. That's got it. That'll do. Right, so start again. I'm just going to whip that off. That little tack. Whip 
grinder on it and uh, start again. Not that it really matters, but it'll tie, just tidy it up. Right, there we go. So, let's see if we can... That's not straight, that's not at 90 degrees, so I'm just going to hammer that. If I can find myself a little tapper. There we go. Let's see if I can just square that up. It's a bit hot, so it uh, looks a bit better. It's got a touch more. Oh, I think that's... Has that gone too much out of the way now? Just a little bit. Yeah. Just tap it back again. Only needs a, a mat. No, back the other way. I think that's probably about it. So it's a bit hot. Right, good enough for me. That'll do. At the end of the day, it's only a blooming brand. There ain't no precision workmanship in this workshop. Let's see if the width is about right. Yes, yeah, so it's about 26, 27 mil wide. What's that? About 26 and a half. Yeah, that's close enough for me. That'll do. Actually, I just want to make sure the bottom is level, so I'm going to try and find my, where is it, the square that I can put across the bottom there. Let's see if I can find it. There we go. Just going to line those bottom edges up. That's it. Not precision, but I like to get it somewhere near. Alright, so that's got the top end. Looks somewhere near right. Get the general idea. So I've just got to now tack the bottom to secure it. Three little tacks. Got it? That's hot now, that's very hot now. Yeah, that's it. Park up, that'll do. So, next job I think I'll just grind up those uh, tacks after cooling it down. I was getting a bit hot. Dry it off. Yeah, so we're just going to grind off those tacks so that it's uh, flush on the burning surface. I don't want big lumps in the work in the uh, brand. Give it a quick go all the way over. Because this, this bar is actually quite, um, it's got quite a radius on it all the way around, so I'm just going to take a little bit off all the way over it, flatten it off a bit. It shows it up nicer as well. Right, now you can see where I've welded, we've got these lumps. So I'm going to get some files out and just file those corners out back to square. Right, I've got three or four files here. See what we can we can do. Start off with a fairly coarse square one. And for all you old folk who are going to say, "Oh, he's back dragging that file," wouldn't do that file. My day. Yeah, well, it's not your day. Um, you know, these days you can see it's taking that corners out now. You know, back dragging a file. Oh, so what, you know, it's only a file. If it wears out quicker, I'll go and buy another one. They're only cheap these days. So, no comments about getting a slap around the head for back dragging files in your day. I ain't interested.
Alright, we're getting there. I don't know why I'm spending so much time because as I say it is only a, a brand at the end of the day but it's just in my nature I suppose I like to get it somewhere near file to get right in that bottom bit where the G comes up to, to meet the H. So, just about there I think. No, I need a, a round file which I didn't bring out with me. I'm just going to get one out and draw. I've got dozens of Files. These are little chainsaw files. Now these are dirt cheap. They're about 50p each. I buy them. I buy a box, a box of a dozen, and uh, they last really well. Even though I drag them. There we go. It's just about there. I think I'm just going to take a few of the other little corners off. A few little spots of weld. Now I need something to hold it with, probably a little bridge or something with a handle on. So we're going to sort that out. Alright, I've decided against a bridge. I'm just going to put another piece of that flat that I used to make the thing across the back. Tack it on in three places and then put the handle coming up off it about in the centre of the, the two letters. So that when you're burning it on, it gives fairly even pressure down through the, all the letters, or both the letters. So we'll just tack that on there. Doesn't really matter where. three tacks. That'll do it. That's a little bit on the warm side. Okay. Cool it down. And that's the bit of quarter round that I'm going to use for the handle. I'm just going to bend it round the tool that I used to bend the C piece round. There it is, just literally pulled around cold, ever so quick. Cut off to length. And I'm going to try and put it, as I say, somewhere in the middle of the letters, approximately. So it's all hit and miss in this workshop. Most of the time, anyway. Get it where you can see it. Let's have a tack on there. That, that didn't hold, did it? That's trouble doing it without your, sh your screen on, just pointing and closing your eyes. Right, that's got it, so I can put my screen on, finish it off properly. do feel rough. Yeah, I'll go to bed with a very large whiskey tonight. Uh, that's about it. That'll do. It's not pretty but I think that's got it. So it's only a brand. I'm not going to use it very often. In fact hardly at all. 
obviously if you're making your own and you're going to use it a lot you want to make sure all the welds are pretty good but I think we're just about ready for a test flight. So there we go, we're going to stick it in the fire. You'll notice I've got a glove on because I'm going to stand it upright and the top of the uh, handle might get a bit warm because uh, I want to try and heat the letters evenly. You could probably do it with a blowtorch quite easily. I've got a little bit of uh, pine 3 by one and a half. I'm just going to use for the demo purposes. See what happens. Yeah. Not bad. But you can see it's still come up pretty wide, even though that's only a bit of eighth material because the, the it burns either side of the material as well it doesn't just burn below it. it it spreads out because of the heat so it's doing a job no doubt about that we'll get the wire brush and take off the sort of overburn you can see it's certainly doing what it was designed to do but for me it's a bit big for what I actually wanted a bit of sandpaper let that overburn off yeah so there you go it, it, it works and it's quite neat it's burnt quite nicely as I say it's, it's still a bit big I'm going to have to make another one. What I'll show, actually, what I'll do, I'm going to show you what the quarter um, one looks like. The ones I did years ago. Um, this is the just the B. And that's quarter. So that's twice the size of what we've been using just now. So I'll get this hot and see what this does. It really is, it's quite nice but it's, you know, as I say, I think I'm going to have to make a smaller one. But if, if you were using it on, you know, big jobs or fence posts or wanted to mark your property or whatever, perfect. But I want it for small jobs. You can see the difference with that. Although, I don't think proportionately it's expanded the same as the smaller one. The smaller one's gone from about 8th to 3 sixteenths. That's gone from about quarter to 5 sixteenths. So, I don't know. But that's, that's the difference. Which again was fine for um, names and horse signs. And that is quite quite nice but yeah I'm going to have to make a smaller one I think got the I've got the, the the strength in the thickness the width so I think I could afford to go down a size and see what happens but that'll be alright I'll hang on to it I'll use it occasionally on something or other just to mark bits of my property but I'm going to quickly very very quickly I won't bore you with it. I'm going to knock up a smaller one. Right, as if by magic. Literally taking me minutes to make this because I've spent no time at all on it. And this is out of just a piece that I had lying about that I made a slat for some seats with. And it's about 1.6mm, so it's really thin, 16 gauge. Um, but again, it's, it's about 3 quarters of an inch wide, so you keep the strength in that. And I haven't bothered tacking the bottom, you see I've tacked inside. I haven't bothered tacking the bottom, so I haven't got a, that problem of um, grinding up the bottom or filing the bottom to get it flat. I've literally just attached, attached it together. And you can see I've already tried it up the top there. Uh, and it looks quite nice, but we'll give it another go. Just to show you. 
I just wanted to try it before I videoed it to make sure it didn't fall apart. And it didn't. There you go, it's... I haven't actually got it that hot this time. But still pretty ideal. And that has now come up from about 16th up to about an eighth. Um, and that's sort of more like what I wanted. Because I want to try and put it on things like hammer handles, stuff like that. Let's just give it another go. And literally I did this, made this one cold, just bent it round, a bit of tube, a bit of small tube, stuck it in the vise and knocked a, uh, the hockey stick bit round. And literally just tacked them together. And did it the way I said I should have done the other one, by tacking it on then cutting it. And yeah, that's gone in, that's, that, I heated that up much more and that's gone in really quite deep. And that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's much better. That's much more like what I wanted. So now I've got two. A big one and a small one. Let's see if we can find something in the workshop to try it on. Try it on my newly shafted small club hammer. This is only a little, I'm not sure how much this weighs, but it's a small one anyway. See if I can put it on the handle. I'm going to have to rock it, I think, to get it on there, but it should work. There we go. Let's get the other way up. Start at the back. And gently rock it across. Back again. Yeah, like it. Yeah, like that. Feel focus. That's much more like I was expecting, or much more what I wanted in the first place. But uh, I obviously hadn't thought about it. Otherwise, I would have made a small one in the first place. But yeah, that's. That's okay. So anyway, it gives you an idea of how to make brands for whatever you want to make it for. And I hope it works for you. Thanks for watching.